My name is Bill George. I'm president of TransDev's On Demand's Taxi and Sedan Service. And to give you a little background, I know many of you are familiar with Dave Bird, who's my counterpart with Super Shuttle and TransDev. Uh, my history in this business goes back about 31 years with uh, Yellow Cab in Kansas City. And over that time, I, I have run a, a multimodal company, which was the largest in the Midwest, sold to Coach USA in 1997. Stayed on to run it for him for a while and ended up buying it back in 2002. And uh, renamed it, redid some things, and then sold to TransDev in 2007. And had the ultimate job of a consultant for many years, which worked out well. And then I uh, got the wild hair one day to take this president's job. And it's probably the most fascinating time in our business. Many people refer to those of us in the taxi business as dinosaurs. I like to think we're like those really old turtles that just <laughs> stick around. And, um, you know, it's really, it is fascinating because you look at all the published reports between Uber and Lyft combined are losing about $7 million per day to do two things. One is to encourage people that never would have thought they would have driven a taxi cab to get into the business. So it's changing the pool of drivers that we can recruit from. And secondly, it's taking people that have been married to a parking spot and their keys and giving them saying, you know what, I will try a new way of transportation. So through the subsidy both Uber and Lyft are giving through the losses as well as the, with the drivers that are doing it at a lower rate, it's really expanding the marketplace. And so our goal with TransDev, how do we keep our traditional business as well as do something that appeals to this new marketplace and takes advantage of the, the magnificent investment that's being made in it. So what we came up with as our concept was Z-Trip. And Z-Trip really combines all of the features that you've seen from the TNCs with all the benefits you get from regular taxi. And some of the significant ones are we've got an easy to use app, you can book the closest taxi or black car, always the closest car is dispatched, the hassle-free payment, um, one area that we differ in is that all of our drivers, for the most part, are full-time drivers. So when it comes into regulatory compliance, rather than fight the regulators and the agencies on it, we've embraced that. And we think over the long term, it's the right way to go. One of the things that we've noticed is, because the rates are so low on some of the other services, the churn on the drivers is extremely high. And our estimates are that every 60 days, for the most part, it turns over, which is why there is always a, a reluctance to have any kind of further background check or anything else. But we've shown that we are able to do it in many of these markets. In the markets that we operate, we've got that full check. And as we all know, safety is something you never want to really say, we do this or that. But we think over time it will be proven out. And the experience in the past 31 years, certain forms of deregulation always lead to re-regulation. What we're trying to do is get ahead of the curve because typically when it gets re-regulated, it does so in such a knee-jerk reaction that it gets back into terrible regulations again. So by going ahead and complying with rules, making sensible changes where they should exist, we think that we've created a little bit different model there. So and as I mentioned in our service, um, how we differentiate, differentiate ourselves from the other services are, number one, you can book a car for now or for later. And if you go to the Z-Trip app and you book any of our cars for later, if you know that you have to leave your home at 5.30 in the morning for an early flight, you go in and with four taps on the app, you've got a car ordered for you at 5.30 in the morning. So you don't have to worry about, you know, am I going to, should I get up at 5.15? Am I going to get surge price? You know you've got a chauffeur waiting for you, and that is also true on the arrival. So when your flight comes in and you get delayed for any reason, the drivers and dispatch are tracking your arrival. So we think it provides a higher level of service. <clears throat> One of the other things we do is, for the flexibility of payment, you can certainly pay through the app, you can pay through a direct bill, you can pay cash with the driver, you can pay with the credit card in the car. You can split the fare, whatever's more convenient. Um, the ADA vehicle issue, that's something that we, because of our airport operations, because of the areas that we're in, we've adopted that and most of our fleets have at least 15% ADA capability, but it's very simple on the app. If you need an ADA vehicle, you just order it, same price and it's available for you. You can pre-order, you can do on-demand for that. So the app itself uh, is pretty simple. It, you're familiar with what most apps look like and, and the technology that's in there. We do give you the selection between black car taxi, ADA, and in some of our cities we also offer vans. Uh, shows you that you can use your Z-Trip credits, you can use a direct bill model, which is something a little bit differently. 
multiple credit cards, you could have different payment, payment profiles set up on it. You'd be able to track your driver, see the driver, the license plate number, the fleet number. All of our vehicles are identified with permanent markings, so you've got that safety quotient that's there, and it also makes it easier for enforcement. The ability to rate the driver, you have the ability to tip if you'd like, <coughs> and the flexibility you can change within the app if you want to pay in the car or pay through the app, as I mentioned. So we take all this data, we track everything, we've integrated with mixed panels so we can get true data and good information on who our customer base is, um, understanding what it is they're looking for, what services they previously used, and get a real profile so we can go ahead and continue to tailor the services that they need and finding gaps in between uh, the existing offerings, which is where Ztrip actually came from. So the further part of this is we own Yellow Cab in many different cities. This is part of what we've rebranded. And we, this is where I think we really hit the nail on the head. And there's an example just about 40 miles north of here in Boulder. We took our yellow cab fleet, and this is the actual vehicles that are now in there. And we branded everything as um, Z-Trip. And we'll continue to do that in all our cities, as well as affiliates that we're signing up. One of the significant, significant differences with our fleet as well is that drivers can take personals. So a lot of people feel very comfortable with their driver. We encourage that within the other systems where it doesn't. <coughs> Uh, fit their model. If you want a certain person that you're going to the airport, you know your wife and children are home alone, and you feel comfortable with that driver, you can have them go and take additional trips for you and make arrange that directly. Still control it through the app or with the driver directly. It's allowed us to also go and attract a new driver, and this is specifically where we get the benefit from what the TNCs are spending in the marketplace. That it does. You know, it was very difficult to get someone to say, "I've hit rock bottom. I'm now going to drive a yellow cab." And now they're saying, you know what, I love this. I love meeting people. I love getting out there, making money, and, and I enjoy the job. So we're taking people that have had a great experience where they enjoy the people, but they're looking, how do I turn this into a full-time occupation? And that's what we've been able to do with our service. So as we continue to expand aggressively, we will be in about 10,000 vehicles by the end of the year around the country. We just signed a major partnership with the largest operator in Texas signing up Austin, San Antonio, and Houston, have a pending deal uh, with that operator for Dallas, and then we'll be looking at some strong areas in California and Arizona to fill out our map. But we, have the, we believe in 2017 we'll go from 10,000 to 20,000 vehicles. Some of the initial results are really promising. Just going from yellow to Baltimore, you see the amount of trips, and these are real numbers in a short period of time just through the rebrand and with the addition of the technology. So we're very excited about how we've seen that and when we rebrand just by changing the, the, the name and identifying it more with our app, we're able to get increased downloads as well on the app. So we have experimented with a taxi TNC model, which is very similar to the TNCs you see. Um, we like it in some areas, to, but only as a basis to cover our peak periods. And I think one of the issues that comes up, and actually it was um, the boot was mentioned earlier, you have now drivers that have multiple apps open. And you have this vaunted on-app, on off-app coverage. Well, the issue that I think legally is going to be tested very strongly over the next year or two is when a driver is not on a trip, but he has three apps open on their dash, and he hits a pedestrian. Who's covering that accident? Because the first thing that's going to happen is the driver's personal insurance is going to deny it because it was used in commercial vehicle. Let's say Lyft, Uber, and Wings all get a complaint because the app was open. There is going to be a significant court decision that's going to have to be made as to who covers that and what the extent of that liability is. And we think it's very interesting. In our case, what we've done is solved it. Under our model, we offer 24-7 insurance. And we think ultimately somebody's going to end up with that claim and we want to make sure that we're protected on it. So that's where we differ a little bit from the TNCs. And the insurance is not dependent upon the app being on. The insurance covers the car when it's operating in that commercial service. So one of the other areas we differentiated ourselves is we opened up a national call center in Rome, Georgia. And this is, takes all of our taxi cab calls as well as dedicated lines for Zetra. So in addition to 24-7 online support, we actually offer 24-7 live support. And we've got both local numbers as well as a national number for Z-Trip, so you have the ability to come in. And, and one of the biggest complaints, especially dealing with airports, people leave their phones in the car immediately, and they panic. And 
they don't have their device to contact the driver. They don't know even how to get a hold of them and you end up having to do it with the TNCs on an online basis. With us, you simply call the Z-Trip number from a pay phone. You can still find one of those. And, uh, but it makes it easier for us to track. We've got the complete tracking. Nationwide, I was looking the other day, we probably return 75 phones per day to customers in airports. It's the most common thing left in the vehicle. So that helps tremendously. Um, as we look and in, in where we're going in this, we did a lot of research through TransDev for where the services are to better understand what's happening and you saw the marketplace where TNCs and taxis, how that market has started to split. What we found was really interesting, over a third of the riders still have a preference for local cabs. And we think a lot of this is uh, there's a safety issue with a driver that's in a branded vehicle. But more importantly, you've got veteran drivers that the idea that we've all had this experience that new drivers don't know where they're going a lot of times. And as many of you know in a city that you're familiar with, if you follow GPS, that's usually not the most efficient way. So we think that there's a, a real opportunity in that case to continue to merge the best of both worlds in the service to come up with a product that people will identify with and be loyal to. And so as we looked at this, this is probably the thing that was most fascinating to us. If you would have asked me before what these results would have looked like, it would have skewed very heavy to the older population and the newer ones would be um, more towards the TNC model. But we saw that there's actually a really nice mix in there of people that still find that service attractive. And then we went back and redid this survey after we did our rebrands in Pittsburgh and Boulder and those numbers shot up considerably. And it's funny because the reaction in Boulder was, you guys figured out how to be Uber and a taxi cab. That's really cool. And that's kind of what we put together. So as we go through our findings, you know, customers appreciate the safety compliance. And that becomes more and more prevalent every day. Um, it's interesting. I'm based in Kansas City, and I've watched what's happened there. Is they've allowed Uber to come in the airport. Um, the drivers hailed it immediately. The, the TNC drivers thought it was great, but now they're staging up at the airport for three or four hours in between trips. So it's becoming eerily similar to the inefficiencies that exist in the cab market. And I think that's something that's rather interesting that a lot of them are former cab drivers, and as you mentioned, there's a social aspect to it, but they sit there and, and it's just not efficient. Um, transparent fares are important. Every time there's a surge in one of our areas, we can tell because our downloads increase. So that's something that we have the same price 24-7, and while our price may be on an everyday basis a little bit higher, it is the price when you need us most. Um, skills, I mentioned skilled drivers that know the city are appreciated, and that's where they build their personals, and that's something when you find a driver, they drop you off at dinner, and he says, yeah, I'll be back here in two hours, just call me at this number. There's a lot of comfort in that, and it's a value added to the service. With our airport service specifically, through the app, you can choose between just having a curbside pickup or a meet and greet, depending on the airport regulations. But it's another value add we, we offer. And then the 24-7 live support. And for the airport issues, um, here's what we're seeing. As I mentioned, old taxi, you're getting longer airport times. We're starting to hear more about long haul trips because they're sitting there for such a period of time and they're coming in. And once they know the airport, it's just the old taxi cab trick that's coming into play. Um, customer intelligence is increasing. And this is why drivers are carrying multiple apps, and we've seen people where they'll move their pen a block away to see if they can get out of a surge, or they'll try the other services. So as the customers become more sophisticated, it's going to dictate which way the market goes. Um, mags, as you've seen, um, doing a long-term mag is going to be very, very difficult in this business until we see the fallout of what's going to happen. I think everything's going to go on a per trip basis and as we are looking at airports we're looking rethinking completely how we bid an airport contract. Um, I, I disagree completely on the idea that they're different services. We are providing on-demand transportation taking a client from point A to point B for a fare. At the end of the day isn't that really what, what the service is being provided? And as the example was used, if you do it with camels or monkeys or electric planes and everything, the bottom line is we are transporting people for hire from point A to point B. A duck is a duck, and this one's quacking. And um, as I mentioned, the insurance issues, that, that is an issue that's going to come up, and it is interesting because we are seeing more, and actually that wasn't an isolated case. 
plaintiffs are now naming municipalities in this because they're aware of the risk, they've relaxed it in some cases, and there is, I mean, the bottom line is we're a litigious society. This area is so open and ripe for litigation, and when you're touting billion-dollar valuations and million-dollar coverage, everybody wants to tag as many people as possible. And so we're interested to see how that fallout is, and as I mentioned, our solution is provide the 24-7 insurance, and we escape that part of it. So that's what we're doing in TransDev. It's a really exciting time, and I appreciate the opportunity to address everyone today. Thank you.